Hey guys, Rusty here, and I'm going to be showing you how you could get, I'm going to say this correctly on the first try, ready for this, the Hand of Nilgan Ihamat. Nailed it. Anyways, this is the second of four hand mounts that the Jailer does use to fist himself with, and overall, there are some tricky spots. There's a lot of elite mob areas you have to go in, so some areas you will want some groups, uh, a group of two or three people to do, but overall, this is more of a this will take a while to get than actual difficulty. So with that being said, let's actually see how you get this mount. So before we actually get into how you get the five rings required for the mount, we do have to talk about the rift phase in Corthia and the Maw, and you enter these through rifts, shocking, in Corthia. There are set spawn locations on the map. I will, of course, when it becomes important, show you the one that I use, but essentially you're going to need the rift keys, which you get from tier four archivist codex. That's going to be your main source of them. However, if you're like me and you're not at tier 4 yet, although I'm super close, they do have a chance to drop from rares and treasures in Corthia. So, you guys, you only need one, though, generally speaking, if you get lucky with the rare spawn. So just farm out some rares and treasures in Corthia until you get a Rift Key, unless you are tier 4 with Archivist Codex, in which case you don't need to even worry about it. Once you enter a Rift Portal, you're essentially put in a separate phase. Now, that's all you need to know for now. That will become more important later on. Let's actually get into how you get the five rings to unlock the hand mount. So there are five rings total that you need to collect. The first one we're going to start off with is the stone ring, as this does require a Necrolord Assault to be up, and also a very specific quest during the Necrolord Assault to be up. And at the time of making this video, that is currently the case. So head over to Perdition Hold while the Necrolord Assault is up, and pick up the quest Waiting in the Wings. This will is a follow-up quest, or lead you to a follow-up quest. It could be one of two quests. It could either lead you to pulling his chain or putting a plan together. It depends on the week. The quest you want is putting a plan together. If the other one is up, well, guess what? Guess you're waiting for the next Necrolord Assault. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Putting a plan together is required for this. So you're going to collect four quartered ancient rings. Now, the first, by the way, you also need the grappling hook upgrade from Venari, so you could actually use the grapple points. So if you don't have that, go buy it from Venari. Now, the first one you're going to want to loot are going to come from Maw Sworn Caches, which are on the top of the wall of Perdition Hold. So use the grapple points. Now, keep looting them until you get a defense map. That will give you a quest for another quartered ancient ring. More on that in a second. The first quartered ancient ring you're going to want to get will come from a very specific Maw Sworn Cache. It is guaranteed. I will, of course, show you which one it is on the map. You're going to grapple up to the wall, loot that Maw Sworn Cache, and you'll get your first quartered ancient ring. Now, this is going to cause two things to happen. The first one you want to keep an eye out for is this will cause Maw Mad Constructs to spawn. Essentially, it's an NPC that will spawn. They'll start uh, yelling. Basically, there'll be a dialogue they'll saying, stay away, nasty Maw Walker. I think they also yell your name. Essentially, there are neutral mobs that will just start running away. So just keep an eye out for your dot in your chat box for when the, again, the Mad Maw Mad Constructs. That's the name of the mob. Once you see it spawn, slash target it, you can make a slash target macro, hunt it down, kill it, and you'll get the ring. If it does despawn, don't worry, it will spawn again a few minutes later. Now, the other one you're going to want is going to, essentially, it's just a random spawn on the ground in Perdition Hold, the third quartered ancient ring. I definitely recommend grabbing a trained grommet carrier from the Archivist Codex. Essentially, you use it, spawns one of those grommet things. It'll actually sniff out the treasure for you. It's not required, but it will make it much easier. Essentially, guys, just run around Perdition Hold with the grommet until it eventually tells you, hey, follow me, I found something. And then you will find your third quartered ancient ring. Now, for the final quartered ancient ring, the green item, definitely complete the quest putting a plan together and also accept the quest from the defense map that you looted from one of the Moss Sworn caches. Now, complete that quest with the robot. Essentially, you're going to be jumping on the walls with the robot, right? Destroying all the pylons, hence why you need that quest to be up. And once you do, you'll get your fourth quartered ancient ring. And once you have all four, you can head on over to Zaval's Cauldron and just simply use one of the soul forges there, basically one of the forges. Just right click on one of the quartered ancient rings 
and that will combine them all into the stone ring, which is the first out of all the five rings done. This is probably one of the more complicated rings to get. The other four, except maybe one more, yeah, definitely one more, aren't too difficult. So let's move on to the second one. That's also kind of annoying to get. So the next ring we're going to cover is going to be the silver ring, which is in a locked chest in the Desmo Tehran area, which is in Northern Beast Warrens in the mall that was opened up in patch 9.1. It's the area where the Sanctum of Domination raid entrance is. Now, I definitely recommend bringing a group of like another player, maybe three other, two other players with you, right? As many as you want, right? Depending on your gear level, as there are a lot of elite mobs here and also a high health rare that you will eventually have to kill. Point being, guys, I definitely recommend bringing some friends, guildmates, even some pug trade chat members, right? Or group finder members to help you out with this. So let's go over and get the keys. Now, the, fir the first seal breaker key you want to keep an eye out for has a low chance to drop from Maldraxi defectors in the area. That's it. Essentially, to get this, you're going to want to keep killing Maldraxi defectors until it drops. Simple enough. The second key is kind of annoying. By kind of annoying, I mean very annoying. This comes from Heligard Supply Caches. I'm, it's simple, right? You just find the chest. It'll mark it on the map. Nope. These have a chance to spawn almost anywhere in the Desmo Tehran area, and they are not marked on your map, guys. So what I recommend doing, guys, simply just keep riding around. If you have a tank spec, definitely go tank spec so you don't get days. Keep riding around until you again find they're called Heligard Supply Caches. It does have a guaranteed drop to come from them, though. Unfortunately, they don't mark on the map, so you just have to keep your eyes open for the chest. It's annoying. I think at the very least, Blizzard should have marked them on your map. But that's how you get the second key. The third key comes from a rare spawn called, I don't know how you say this, Yelva, Yuva, YLVA. Essentially, it's, uh, it's Squarm's mate, simple enough. So it's a rare spawn. I will, of course, show you on the map where the rare spawn is located. If it's up, you're definitely going to want a group for this. Group of five should be more than enough. Even a group of three could do it right. Maybe with higher gear, you can be able to solo it. But simply kill the rare spawn, and it is a 100% drop chance to drop the feeder's hand and key. Right-click that item. It'll give you the third seal breaker key. The fourth one is very simple. Essentially, you're going to want to go to the one area. It's a cave where you actually had a story quest. We'll, of course, show you its location on the map. I guess it's more of a hallway. But essentially, just go down the hallway. You're going to kill a couple of the elite mobs in there. And then on the wall, hanging on a key ring is going to be your last seal breaker key. Now, once you have all four keys, head over to the chest. It's essentially hidden under some stairs. Again, we'll, of course, show you its location on the map. Simply put in all four of the keys, and then you will be able to loot the chest, giving you the second ring, which is going to be the silver ring. Again, guys, I absolutely recommend bringing some friends to help you out with this area, as there are a lot of elites, and also to help kill you, help you kill that one rare mob. And just keep your eyes open the entire time for those Heligard supply caches. They are really annoying to find. I did test out the grommet was not working. However, that was one the patch just released. It could have been a bug. Maybe the grommet works now, similar to how it did with the stone ring. Let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on to the next ring. So the third ring is going to be the signet ring. And this is a 100% drop chance from Exos, Herald of Domination, which is a rare spawn. Now, in order to summon him, you or someone else, friend, guildmate, someone in trade chat or at a group finder, needs a certain item, that item being Domination's Calling. Now, in order to actually make Domination's Calling, you need three other items, which are also 100% drop chances from other rares in the Maw. I will, of course, show you their locations on the map. You want to head over to each of these rares and each of these rares in order to actually summon them. If they're up, there will be a star on the map. If they're up, you need three other people with you. Each person is going to stand on one of the little summoning pedestals, click the extra action button, and this will spawn in the rare. So I'll just make a group in the group finder. Now that there's actually a mount locked behind these, I'm sure you'll get plenty of people doing this. If not, ask a guild mate. By the way, if you're not playing in a guild, join a guild. It makes your wild experience so much better. Ask a couple friends, or otherwise just make your own group in the group finder. You're going to need the, dom the dominion etchings of loss, grief, and also pain. Once you have that, combine them. Then once you do that, you'll get your Dominations Calling and head over to Under the Altar Domination in Perdition's Hold. I will, of course, show you its location on the map as usual. And basically, you'll want to head into that little room, use your Dominations Calling, and what this will do, it'll spawn a portal up to the Altar of Domination. However, it also spawns the rare, which is why you, or again, someone else, doesn't have to be just you, is required to have the item. It will spawn the rare. As in patch 9.05, they did add grapple points to the area, but you can't just grapple up there. You actually need the item to spawn the rare. Anyways, once you do that, simply kill him off and you will get the signet 
ring. Let's move on to the fourth ring, which is super easy to get. So the fourth ring and by far the easiest is going to be the gold band, which requires basically a lot of climbing. So demon hunters, you'll have an easy time, but don't worry. It's obviously possible to do it even though you're not a demon hunter. So first things first, you do need the grapple item, which again, definitely mentioned when you did the first ring, the stone ring. So make sure you buy that from Venari if you don't. Head over to where I am on the map. Use the first grapple point and this will start your climb. I will of course show you how to do this only single jumping on my demon hunter and how to actually climb basically all the rocks. I'll probably speed it up in the video for you guys. Essentially, you're just gonna wanna keep moving up and down of the little rock slides until you eventually get to an easy part. Once you do, you'll just go all the way up. Again, just follow how I do it in the video. All the way up. And basically on like a little spike thing, you'll have the gold band there. Demon Hunters though guys, you'll just be able to double jump there because you know, we're so awesome, right? Demon Hunter, I love I, it's it's isn't it just great having double jump? Isn't it just amazing? Anyways guys, essentially you're just doing a lot of climbing even though if you're not a DH It's still very easy to figure out and how to climb there Just follow the pathing I do in the video and you'll be more than okay to go and get the gold band Let's move on to the final ring So the final ring we're gonna go after is going to be the ruined band And this is where the rift realm that I talked about at the start of the video comes in so go ahead and get one of your rift keys. Then you're gonna wanna head over to where I am in Corthia. There's multiple rift spawn points, but the one I'm at is generally closest to where the rare spawns. Essentially, you're just gonna go in there, click on the rift, it'll consume your rift key, and then you'll be in the rift phase and you have 15 minutes. You could also use your extra action button to exit. Once you do that, you can also, basically guys, you're gonna wanna head over to where I am on the map in the mall, and there is going to be a rare spawn there, or there can be, it's a rare spawn, right? He might not be up more than that in a second. Uh, Torgloon, I think is how you say his name. You're gonna simply kill him off if he's up, and then he has a 100% drop chance to drop the ring. Now, if he is not up, what you can do is simply just type in Fallen, as there's plenty of Fallen Charger groups, depending on when you're watching this video, farming in the mall right now so essentially you can realm hop to other realms and see if he is up worst case scenario it's a little unfortunate i'm not a big fan of it he's not up hopefully they buff his spawn rate if he's not up you'll just have to go back in the rift phase again essentially just keep going there until you eventually kill the rare spawn and then you'll get the ring now once you have all five of your rings you're going to want to stay in the rift phase hence you want why you want to save this one for last because then you could just go get the mount without having to use another rift key Head over to this cave where I am on the map. This is, of course, actually uh, the cave you talked to Jaina with her million years of RP during the Maw intro. Again, you have to be in the rift phase. You go down there, and essentially, there's going to be one of the hand mounts there. Not the exact one, but you you'll see in a second. You're going to go down there, and there's going to be a hand there with five glowing rings on it. Shocking. That's why you collected the rings. Put on all five of the rings on the hand. It'll be like, yo, thanks. And you're going to get a quest from it. Simply accept the quest, complete it right there, and you will get the control ring, allowing you to control the mount, unlock it, boom, there you go, hand mount, Jailer's only down the two mounts left to fist himself with. Not for long though, because I plan on making guides for those two. Anyways guys, that's it. That is how you get the hand of Nilgan and Himat, man who comes up with these names. <laughs> Anyways, that's how you get one of the hand mounts, the golden one. I do hope this guide helped you. It is a little unfortunate that you do have to wait for certain things to be up, like the Rift Rare, more especially the Necrolord with uh, Assault with a specific quest to be up, but it is what it is. You get a pretty cool mount out of it. Too bad it's a reskin of three others. Although the three other reskins are, I think the hand mounts are friggin' awesome. Like, I mean, you get to play rock, paper, scissors with them. Anyways, if you have a question, guys, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't always get to all of them, but I always try my best to answer as many comments as possible. Like the video if it helped you out. Sub to the channel if you like the content and you're not already. And remember, Halo 3 is the best Halo, and that's a fact, and nothing can change that. Except maybe Halo Infinite, but we'll have to wait and see. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.